Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video is going to be looking at the dot point, explain the relationship between the organization of the structures used to obtain water and minerals in a range of plants and the need to increase the surface area available for absorption. So what we are going to look at first is how plants obtain water and minerals that are necessary for them to survive. So in aquatic environments, Water and minerals are absorbed across the whole surface of the plant because they're constantly in contact with water. Plants that live in the water will usually have a very large surface area in order to be able to absorb that water straight across the surface of the leaves. In terrestrial plants, however, uh, water and minerals are usually absorbed through the root system and that's what we're going to have a look at in quite a bit of detail in this video. Root systems must have a large surface area in order to be able to absorb enough nutrients to keep the plant alive. And they achieve this by having a branching structure and many root hairs. Root systems also have a secondary function in helping to anchor the plant into the ground so they don't blow over, they don't fall over, etc. So let's have a look at the different types of roots that we have. So the first thing we have is a taproot. So this is the main root from which the side shoots come out and what these roots do is they penetrate deep into the soil. They can act as a storage organ and swell up, for example, in carrots. So if you've ever grown carrots or you've picked a carrot before, when you pull it out of the ground, you see that uh, the orange part has sort of swollen, so it is contains most of the water and nutrients. However, it will have tiny little hairs coming off it in order to increase the surface area. The next type of roots are fibrous roots, and these form a network of roots close to the soil surface. So as we can see in our taproot, we have that single main root that shoots straight down into the water, sorry, into the soil. However, our fibrous roots branch out like little fingers that spread out close to the surface of the soil. So they spread out in order to support the plant, but also to provide a large surface area for the absorption of water. So these types of plants are usually found in areas where we don't get much rain. So when it does rain, there's a nice surface area of um, roots towards the top of the soil that can draw as much water in as possible. Next, we have mycorrhiza. So uh, these are associated with a symbiotic relationship. So you'll recall back in the local ecosystem topic, we looked at symbiosis where organisms live uh, in unison with each other. And in this case, the fungi provides the plant with minerals and nutrients and the plant provides uh, carbon products to the fungi in usually in the um, form of carbon dioxide. So it's a mutual relationship where they both help each other out. And lastly, aerial roots, which we had a look at on the excursion, the new metaphors of our mangroves, which are found in areas like waterlogged estuaries and swamps. So that uh, area that we went to on the excursion is known as an estuary, where we have a constant tidal movement of salt water and fresh water in and out of a low-lying area, and the soil becomes quite waterlogged. So in order to overcome that, the plants produce roots that grow above the ground in order to be able to uh, carry out gas exchange uh, so they don't become too waterlogged. So let's have a look at the external root structure that plants have. So the root system is usually below the ground and because of this photos uh, roots do not photosynthesize as they do not have leaves or buds and therefore they do not actually contain chlorophyll. The growing points are protected by a root cap so that they are not damaged as they push through the soil. So the new cells that grow on the end are covered with sort of like a bit like a swimming cap to uh, make sure that as the roots push through the soil, those cells behind are not damaged. As the roots grow, they branch out and provide a large surface area for absorption. And most absorption occurs at the root hairs, which are very fine structures on the surface of the roots that help to increase the surface area. So if we have a look at this uh, diagram of a taproot, Okay, so a simple root that pushes down into the soil and has branching sections from the side. So we can see here we have the primary root, which obviously is the main root that comes from the body of the plant. We then have lateral roots that come off that, and these are found along with the root hairs in the zone of maturation. So this is the area of the plant where it's established, it's maturing, whereas the zone of elongation is where the roots continue to grow into the soil. 
And the meristematic zone is where we have our root tip, which is protected by our root cap at the very end. So if we have a look at the internal root structure now, we can see why uh, the roots are needed in order to carry out uh, the absorption of water and nutrients. So basic root, root structure is made up of three parts. So the epidermis is the outer layer, which lacks a cuticle. So uh, the cuticle is the very outer surface, in particular of leaves, which um, uh, is waxy and provides the surface with protection. So in younger roots, it is covered with a slimy coat or sheath for protection instead of a cuticle. So it's not um, waxy and therefore st stops the water from moving in or out. The cortex is found between the epidermis and the vascular tissue, which is made up of the xylem and the phloem vessels, which we'll look at later, and acts as a storage of excess materials and has air spaces to allow for the flow of gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. Then we have the vascular tissue, which forms a cylinder in the centre, which, as I said, is made of xylem and phloem vessels, and their job is to transport water or nutrients, depending on which vessel we're looking at in particular. So we can see here a transverse section or longitudinal section and a cross section of a root. So we can see that the epidermis is the very outside layer. The cortex is then between the epidermis and our vascular tissue layers. The vascular tissue is found in the center of the root, okay, with our xylem forming almost a perfect X shape in the middle and then the phloem vessels being found inside those. We can see that our root cap is on the very end to protect these newly forming cells at the base of the root. So root epidermal cells also have hairs that help to increase the surface area available for absorption. So if we have a look at this picture here, we can see that this dotted line indicates the surface area for absorption, whereas on this second image which shows the root hairs, we can see that we have uh, much longer dotted line so therefore in effect it's showing that we have a much greater surface area. And that brings us to the end of this video and thank you for watching.